welcome let us uh, <coughs> continue our discussions on uh, superconductivity and towards the end we will uh, discuss uh, uh, the topological states of matter that is uh, uh, something i alluded to in the beginning uh, <coughs> these are extremely new topics uh, of uh, almost at the level of research uh, but uh, one should have some idea of what it is and uh, uh, i will also give references from which you can uh, uh, pick up the basics of it. <coughs> so, we were continuing with uh, Ginzburg Landau uh, theory of uh, superconductor. Uh, in particular, we were interested in uh, finding a problem, uh, the solution of a problem which was uh, uh, undertaken by uh, uh, Abrikosov uh, in uh, former USSR. Uh, using Ginzburg Landau theory. The problem is this that if you have a strong magnetic field and if you have a superconductor uh, 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 typically uh, <coughs> uh, these are called type 2 superconductors and in these superconductors is it possible that uh, you have uh, a state where the magnetic flux penetrates the uh, superconducting uh, system and by, the, by definition at the core of those fluxes. Uh, the uh, uh, magnetic order, uh, the superconducting order parameter goes to 0. So, it becomes normal. Now, if, uh, if one wants to work that out, one uh, starts from this phenomenological theory called Ginzburg Landau theory, which we outlined how, uh, how does it work and uh, it works by a purely phenomenological idea that close to the uh, critical point, the, the transition. Uh, the free energy can be expanded around the new in the normal state value. That means, the state in which there is no order, uh, the free energy of that plus a polynomial uh, and some gradients and suitable terms that account for all the energies uh, that are there in the system uh, due to the formation of the order. And if the ordered state has lower free energy, then the transition takes place and that is how it is uh, uh, set up and that is what uh, gave us this equation uh, in the absence of uh, fields and from which we actually found out another length scale which is Ginzburg Landau coherence length. And then of course, we already had the uh, effective uh, uh, London penetration depth which in a disordered system for example, gets modified uh, considerably from the uh, <coughs> original uh, lambda sub L that we got from uh, London equation, London penetration depth. Uh, so, this effective uh, lambda uh, uh, and the ratio of uh, this uh, Ginzburg Landau coherence length decides which is the way the superconductor will behave, whether it will be type 1 or type 2. So, then uh, these are the length scale in, in two different cases. In type 1, uh, the C is uh, large and uh, <coughs> in a type 2, uh, C is small compared to lambda. <coughs> and this is how the, the B versus H curve will, will behave uh, in, in uh, type 2 superconductor for example, and in type 1. Type 1 of course, you have a only one H C <coughs> at which superconductivity uh, is destroyed and uh, type 2 uh, has two H c values H c 2 and H c 1. Next figure will show it better here it is. So, uh, so the m is proportional to H is uh, in a inside a superconductor minus m is proportional to H and that is what is plotted. So, it uh, increases and then at H c it drops to 0 uh, when the superconductivity vanishes. So, that is uh, what type 1 uh, does. And in type 2, uh, it uh, linearly goes up of course, but then there is a flux penetration, field penetrates the superconductor. So, there is a slow variation and then finally, at H C 2, the uh, superconductivity vanishes finally. Uh, H C is somewhere between H C 1 and H C 2. Uh, the vortex solution we outlined as to how Abrigosov got it, it is very much like uh, the, the principles, uh, uh, the mathematics is almost, uh, the algebra is more or less similar to uh, 
uh, what one did uh, in in uh, quantum Hall effect integer uh, integer quantum Hall effect, and this is the Landau famous Landau problem that you put a uh, put electrons in a perpendicular magnetic field, strong magnetic field, and then of course you find the solution, and uh, the idea is that uh, from that you find out what is the first uh, value of magnetic field at which uh, superconducting solution uh, becomes non-zero. So, it is called nucleation of superconductivity conductivity and it starts uh, at a particular value of H which we called H C 2 if you remember that picture this is where the, uh, the superconductivity starts. <coughs> so, uh, psi becomes non-zero here. <coughs> okay, so, that is how one uh, finds out the uh, the coexistence state coexisting state, uh, but that just tells you that there is a coexistence of uh, uh, both H and uh, B and uh, 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 psi uh, mod psi square in this uh, formulation uh, inside the superconductor. Okay, uh, that is uh, that was the theory, and then therefore of course you can uh, estimate the the H C 2 in terms of H uh, C and find out it find uh, that uh, one finds that it is root 2 kappa times H C. So, kappa equal to 1 by root 2 as, as we <coughs> showed earlier is the point at which the, the two, two kinds of superconductors uh, are distinguished. Okay. So, that is the distinction point between two superconductors type 1 and type 2. <coughs> So, all this came out of uh, this, this calculation of abricotson, but he went further and then he of course, uh, found out uh, something remarkable that he showed that this superconduct this uh, the, the flux that goes inside the superconductor goes in quantized vortices and these quantized vortices uh, are uh, like flux tubes and they are not random inside the superconductor, they have a lattice structure that means they are like crystalline lattice. So, if you look at from the top of the superconductor where the flux tubes are coming out, uh, you will see that uh, they have a regular pattern and uh, uh, what is uh, what uh, was found that this pattern is a triangular lattice and uh, that is what uh, he actually showed. <coughs> uh, so, uh, this calculation is a bit involved, but I am not getting into the details. Uh, he did a fantastically intuitive calculation and uh, found out that uh, of course, he is uh, there was slight numerical mistake he first found a square lattice structure, but uh, later on uh, it was corrected to uh, a triangular lattice. This, this is a remarkable calculation and uh, if you want you can uh, look up uh, in the literature, but that the fact uh, is uh, that the flux does not penetrate randomly it penetrates uh, in tubes the magnetic field and uh, in the flux goes through tubes in quantized vortices and uh, so the flux value is quantized uh, and the uh, uh, the structure of these uh, tubes uh, is not random it's a triangular lattice okay so flux quantization is a, a, a bit uh, uh, i mean this is almost uh, straightforward to see why it it happens and uh, if you remember your London equation, uh, you can uh, you see that it is proportional to A and uh, you can write down this wave function, the superconducting wave function for a pair for example, pair wave function as root over n r e to the power i theta r and then you can uh, that is the <coughs> uh, so, n r is kind of rho square and then you can write psi r as rho e to the power i theta and then of course, just use the London equation uh, and uh, assume that the <coughs> so amplitude of the superconductive wave function is, is more or less well formed and it does not vary strongly. So, grad write psi as uh, uh, grad of psi as uh, h cross grad, grad theta. So, that is how uh, the p operator will be. So, p minus e a e star a e star is the charge of the pair uh, by c is h cross grad theta. Uh, my the, the canonical momentum in presence of a magnetic field will just become this h cross grad theta minus E a by c. This we have also seen in, in the current expression from the Ginzburg-Landau equation 
and of course London uh, equation uh, says that this must be zero, right? And that's uh, exactly what uh, happens. And then you can just integrate over a curve inside the body of superconducting ring, and uh, then you will get uh, this expression a dot dl, which is b curl a dot ds is e star by c into b dot ds. Therefore, grad theta dot dl is equal to e star by h cross c into phi the flux. Now, uh, theta being the phase of the wave function, uh, it has to be single valued over a closed loop. So, it has to come back to the to, to either z change will be either 0 or, or uh, multiple of 2 pi and that is what uh, is used here and uh, that immediately gives you the quantization. So, these uh, fluxes are quantized <coughs> and the quantum is uh, <coughs> uh, n times is the number of uh, that number n 2 pi n uh, into h c by e. Now, <coughs> see h c by e is uh, we know that uh, quantum of flux of course, here it is e star which will turn out to be 2 e that we know. So, this is the value. Okay. Then we did the Josephson effect, which is basically coupled superconductors with a thin insulating layer, and we found out that uh, in even without a uh, 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 potential uh, between the two two junctions be across the junction, uh, you can get a current, and this is remarkable when you you bring two superconductors uh, uh, <coughs> in proximity uh, and uh, so, that uh, just comes out of the fact that uh, uh, these two the, the superconductive conductor has a uniform has one wave function uniform wave function throughout and the two uh, thetas try to uh, uh, become the same at the uh, across the um, uh, the junction and uh, that means, they will exchange uh, uh, Cooper pairs and that is exactly what this calculation shows and it shows interestingly that if v equal to 0 the voltage across this uh, junction is 0 then you have a non zero current whereas if the voltage is uh, finite then of course the current fluctuates so fast that uh, you will effectively get average current zero okay so then you can extend it to ac fields and you can choose a particular frequency at which you will uh, get uh, uh, currents uh, <coughs> So that is called AC Josephson effect. There is a, uh, an instrument that we I mentioned briefly, where uh, you have this uh, the the flux uh, due to a magnetic field can be measured. Of course, flux can be measured in many other ways. Even in uh, MSC labs, we, you measure uh, magnetic field and flux and so on. But the precision of this instrument is extraordinarily high. And that is why this is a, uh, uh, an instrument of choice for anybody doing uh, uh, research in, in, in uh, basic sciences or material sciences or even in cases where uh, you want to find out extremely low magnetic fields uh, somewhere. So, the accuracy the resolution is almost like 10 to the power minus 14 Tesla this is just remarkable and how does it work? it works very simply just as we said that the Josephson effect de depends on the difference of the two phases. right? And when there is a magnetic field of course, there is an additional phase that comes in which is just 1 by phi naught a dot d l right? a is the vector potential. So, or 2 pi by phi naught the way you write uh, typically is uh, sorry. So, this is uh, the magnetic uh, additional mag uh, theta change in theta that uh, creeps in because of the magnetic field and uh, the instrument uh, can sense this, uh, ed this, this change in uh, phase because the current depends on the, on the phase and that is now that is converted into a voltage here in this instrument uh, called a superconducting quantum interference device or squid. Uh, this device is shown here. Uh, there is uh, two junctions. It's a two-junction uh, squid. So these are uh, two Josephson junctions, and the current uh, gets divided into two, and then you can just work out uh, 
and you will see that uh, the the enclosed flux uh, if you have a magnetic field b uh, that uh, is perpendicular to this uh, plane or i mean the if it is not perpendicular you just take the perpendicular component to calculate the flux uh, times the area and then you will get this uh, uh, this this gives you the the value of the uh, phase difference between the two leads suppose initially there were there were no phase differences and once you put this magnetic field due to this vector potential the flux threading through the, the ring uh, you will get a change in this uh, uh, and the change in the phase is just 2 pi phi by phi naught which is what I, is I have written here too. So, this is the change. So, <coughs> so that is that is what one basically measures and then uh, you just uh, see that there is a uh, kind of an interference pattern uh, uh, because of the because obviously the once the flux uh, goes through this uh, integer multiples of uh, um, uh, <coughs> 1 2 phi by phi naught is 1 2 3 4 at these points there are minima uh, you can look at this expression this is the i max is twice i c cos of pi phi by phi naught. So, as a function of uh, phi which means the magnetic field uh, times the area uh, you will get a get this oscillatory pattern and from that you can figure out what phi is. <coughs> uh, it is actually uh, done this way the device uh, you converts this into a, into a voltage. So, it is the magnetic field to voltage transit transducer in some sense. So, flux to uh, to voltage transducer and you, you measure the voltage across this uh, uh, inductively coupled inductance and uh, this basically be between these two points and then it uh, induces another voltage here uh, you can multiply amplify it and uh, this output voltage is what is measured and from that one can read off the magnetic field or change in field. So, that is the device and this device is so important uh, and uh, the theory is uh, fairly simple. Uh, that this is one of the most used uh, magneto magnetic measurement technique uh, in uh, in all of uh, uh, all of all over the world and uh, you can <coughs> go to any uh, uh, lab in a so in more or less a uh, research institute any research institute or uh, universities or uh, and then or iits or somewhere and you will find the, this instrument and uh, and, and see how it works. Uh, it has actually revolutionized the way we do magnetism these days. <coughs> it of course, got a Nobel prize also Brian Josephson got Nobel prize with two others. Okay. Now, the, the, the very recently you must have heard this quantum supremacy and all that there was a lot of noise there is a paper in nature. Uh, then uh, of course, uh, question is what is quantum computing I will not get into that that is not a subject uh, uh, which we are <coughs> studying here, but I will just outline what it is because it uses uh, this one uses uh, solid state techniques to, to generate the so called qubits. So, and the technique one uses uh, uh, I mean one of the techniques one uses is uh, using Josephson junctions. So, see the use of uh, Josephson junction it can it is basically a quantum interference device and so it can be used to generate qubits uh, to two different states which uh, between which you can uh, uh, you have a superposition <coughs> so i will not get into the details uh, the quantum computers is uh, uh, you must have heard it so many times it's a, it's a buzzword and uh, people are pursuing it and uh, they use uh, basic quanta like atoms, photons, spins uh, to generate these uh, states, quantum mechanical states. And then, uh, uh, unlike in the in the classical case where zero and one are the only two states you need uh, in a <coughs> in a bit uh, classical uh, qubit, uh, classical bit, you uh, here you can actually have a superposition between the these two. So it's a some a alpha 0 plus beta 1 uh, kind of divided by root of alpha square plus beta square divided by uh, yeah they so you normalize it by the alpha square plus beta square. Uh, 
So, that kind of uh, so here for example, uh, the uh, one the two coefficients are 1 and 1. So, the normalization is uh, 1 by root 2. This is simple uh, superposition of two states uh, 0 and 1. So, that means, uh, you have now if you have uh, uh, n such uh, qubits, then you can have uh, 2 to the power n such states to play with and that is those states have to be generated they have to be stabilized they have they should not uh, uh, become decoherent. Uh, so, that that is where the the trouble is and of course, then uh, you have to manipulate them also uh, read and write uh, and so on. So, those I will not get into, but uh, the only reason we are discussing this is that one of the uh, methods of generating this is using superconducting qubits. Uh, micrometer or less size uh, uh, Josephson uh, junctions uh, as uh, qubits. <coughs> so, the it is just as, as it says if there are equal number of qubits and regular bits which means classical bits, then the qubits will hold twice the information that is n qubits in a superconduct uh, uh, in, in a superconductor will have 2 to the power n different states. Uh, so, experimentally it can hold uh, much more information compared to a uh, regular uh, digital bit that we nowadays use. Uh, and so, the, the, the speed of the system increases uh, uh, exponentially because it is a 2 to the power 2 the power something. So, it is like an exponent exponential increase. So, the, the, uh, the ones which are suggested long back uh, not very long, but in the late uh, 1990s and early 2000 uh, was this uh, from uh, Mui uh, J E Mui and uh, this is came out in science and this is uh, people are trying to use it and uh, so quantum supremacy uh, <coughs> claims that they have this uh, they referred to this this paper as uh, uh, as a source as how they generate the qubit. Uh, the, so, <coughs> I mean as a possible route to generate the qubit. So, this is uh, simply 3 junction uh, uh, 3 Josephson junction superconducting 3 and 4 junction qubits. So, in, as you can see here you have 2 directions of current and you can linearly super, superpose them. So, this, uh, this superposition is at the heart of uh, quantum computing and the elementary unit is a two state quantum system called called a qubit which i am mentioning so, so far uh, so long uh, computations are performed by the creation of quantum superposition states of these qubits and by controlled entanglement of the information on the qubits so <coughs> so that control is uh, a bit non trivial and the whole system has to be kept in uh, very low temperatures uh, few uh, milli kelvins uh, uh, apparently and uh, <coughs> so this this is how the the basic architecture of the qubit uh, uh, works uh, in a quantum computer of course the algorithm and other things are, are very different ball game and that we will not discuss here it is it's now a separate course <coughs> to discuss quantum computing and its uh, uh, algorithms and so on the mathematics of it uh, but at the core of it uh, are these josephson junctions as a possible uh, qubit. This is a 4 junction qubit on the right and uh, so you can uh, create more states and entangle them. <coughs> so, of course, you have to prevent decoherence as I said. So, you they typically work at extremely low temperatures like milli Kelvin. Uh <coughs> so, it has to be completely isolated from uh, from the from fields and other things from outside. Uh, <coughs> so, these are the things that you you, you have to go uh, you have to take care if you are doing a quantum computation uh, at the level of devices because uncertainty principle will uh, uh, <coughs> become important at that level. And so, you cannot uh, simultaneously measure uh, 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 conjugate properties. Uh, besides, uh, you, to try to measure, you know that there is a collapse that can happen. So the system can go to a state, uh, collapse to a state. So, so you you have to have uh, measured properties uh, without disturbing the system much, and so on. 
Okay, so, those are details I will not get into. Uh, these are applications where uh, the latest one uh, has uh, uh, is uh, on on 22nd of October 2019. Uh, Google has uh, announced uh, in a Nature paper. They have announced also in a press conference. Uh, there is a uh, machine called Quantum Supremacy, uh, prog which is a programmable superconducting processor, which uses programmable superconducting processor. So, they have been able to entangle states, retrieve states and uh, entangle them uh, in a way they want. I mean, so uh, that is that is a remarkable achievement if it is uh, really uh, uh, achieved and of course, uh, the at the heart may be these uh, uh, superconducting uh, Josephson junctions as the qubits. <coughs> they have used 53 of them to do the computation. So, 2 to the power 53 is the the number of states uh, they are uh, they claim that uh, the sycamore processor which is which they called a sycamore processor uh, was able to perform a calculation in 200 seconds that would have taken the world's most powerful supercomputer 10000 years this was immediately disputed within a few days and uh, ibm claimed that it is the they can do the computation even class, even uh, with a usual regular computer at a much much lesser time 2.5 days or so so, no matter what it is, it is still an achievement and it is uh, it's the first step towards uh, uh, doing many other companies and uh, research institutes are engaged in it and uh, <coughs> uh, this is the picture of the quantum supremacy uh, basic architecture this 53 qubits. Uh, uh, so, it has a dimension of 2 to the power 53 state space. Uh, so, that is where the, the those are the states that are manipulated. Uh, that is about 10 to the power 16, which is enormous. I mean, this is just uh, really very, very big. Of course, to have a real quantum computer, one needs to go to a much, much larger uh, um, state space. So, typically, I mean, 10,000 qubits are, uh, <coughs> are a possibility that people are talking about, and uh, that is where the real difference will come up, will show up. So, these are these uh, Joseph, this couple Josephson junctions as you can see, uh, these are probably these are the uh, units. The processor is fabricated using aluminum for metallization and Josephson junctions and indium for bump bonds between two silicon wafers. Uh, the chip is wear bonded to a superconducting circuit board and cooled to below 20 milli Kelvin uh, in a dilution refrigerator. Uh, the processor is connected through filters and attenuators to room temperature electronics which synthesize the control signals. So, that is how the states are uh, manipulated the read and write and information. <coughs> so, the qubits can be read simultaneously uh, the state of all the qubits can be read uh, simultaneously by using some multiplexing techniques which is a technical uh, issue, but this is at the heart is are these Josephson junctions that we have just studied uh, and that, re, that the reason they are so important is because they are extraordinarily sensitive and they are quantum interference devices. So, they are natural choice for qubits. So, this is uh, all of superconductivity that uh, we will do. Uh, there are a lot more this is a fascinating subject. There is this new high T C superconductors which have uh, dramatically changed our perception of superconductivity and uh, they are uh, the possibility of uh, possibilities are endless in, in fact every other day new materials are coming up and their order parameter uh, is an interesting uh, issue because the psi in those new superconductors may have uh, mm, uh, may not be isotropic that it is not a constant gap is not a constant and therefore there are nodes in the gap there are zeros in the gap which have fascinating uh, physics connected to them and uh, uh, those who are interested can uh, look up uh, uh, some of the uh, literature in the there are available there are n number of literatures in large number of literatures available on high temperature superconductor and uh, that is uh, you are welcome to uh, delve into it. <coughs>